Good day everyone. I am Sharvin Shankaran under the supervision of Dr. Shaza Eva Mohammad. Would like to discuss on my final year project topic on biopolymer from microalgae, studying the possibility on the extraction of polyhydroxyalkanoid from chlorella species. As we know today, the use of various plastics, nearly half of which are oil based, is derived from non renewable materials and would eventually become too expensive to recover. Therefore, the production of economically sustainable products would become too costly. Researchers and industries are interested in microalgae because of its capacity to generate biopolymer and well known to be environmentally friendly. Polyhydroxyalkanoids as biopolymer are currently being used in the production of plastics. So PHA are linear polyester produced naturally by bacterial fermentation of sugar or lipids with the property of thermoplastics, biodegradable, biocompatible and brittle to elastic. They are produced by the bacteria to store carbon and energy. The common utilization of PHA is bioplastic and they are used for drugs and fine chemicals and also bioimplants. In this project, chlorella species will be the source of research to extract PHA, where it has a characteristic of having rapid growth and simple life cycles. Chlorella species can be generally found in several different freshwater habitats as well as marine. Based on a study, Zeller investigated that bioplastics and thermoplastics blends from chlorella species. The tensile testing indicates that bioplastics from chlorella species had low extension and high modulus. Another study showed that chlorella species capable of obtaining a higher growth at optimum culture condition compared to the other microalgae which can produce PHA. In this research, there are three problem statements that have been identified which are the source for oil-based plastics are derived from non-renewable resources which will ultimately become too costly to retrieve. There will be strong impact on the environment and decreasing level of fossil fuel. And lastly, most microalgae species are pH sensitive and only a handful can survive a pH range. The first solution to these problems is that the research objective had been conducted. The main objective is to study the possibility of microalgae to produce polyhydroxyalkanoid for potential microalgae based bioplastic production. To be specified, the sub-objectives are to optimize the growth of chlorella species producing polyhydroxyalkanoid under different pH values and to investigate on the optimization of growth on scale-up cultivation of chlorella species. Next, the research scope reflects the first objective is that the pH of the culture medium will be maintained throughout the cultivation at various pH namely 3, 5, 7 and 9. The research scope that will reflect the second objective is that the upscale cultivation will be cultivated for two different cultivation systems at the pH with the highest growth obtained from the growth conducted in lab scale. This is the overall research methodology which associate to objective 1 and objective 2 respectively. Firstly, for the preparation of AF6 medium, stock solution, trace metal solution and vitamin solution will be prepared accordingly to the quantity of nutrients prepared by researcher Kato. Later, to 950 ml distilled water, 1 ml of each of the stock trace metal solution and vitamin solution were added. pH level was adjusted to 5 different level and was maintained using 1 molar of hydrochloric acid and 1 molar of sodium hydroxide. Next, 0.5% of pre-culture microalgae were inoculated into the medium. The period of microalgae strains cultivation will be about 5 weeks under continuous exposure of light at 24 degrees Celsius. Followed by the cultivation, 100 ml of cultivated algae was centrifuged and the pallet was collected and dried overnight in a drying oven at 45 degrees Celsius. Algae cells were then rinsed in 5 ml of ethanol and centrifuged. The cells were suspended in 10 ml of commercial sodium hypochlorite solution and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. Two additional washed with 5 ml of distilled water and 5 ml of ethanol were carried out. 
Pellet was moved to a glass tube dissolving in 10 ml of boiling chloroform and later the solution was filtered through fiberglass filter and then evaporated at 45 degrees Celsius. The total production of PHJ was calculated using the dry weight of the polymers. Based on the result from the growth conducted in lab scale, the upscale cultivation was cultivated at the pH with the highest growth obtained. 5 litre culture grown in the laboratory was mixed uniformly and 1 litre was added to each 19 litre bags. These outdoor cultures were left under direct sunlight for 4 days to achieve maximum cell density. The algal cultures of the 4 bags were then used for inoculation of a closed PBR that contained 1200 litre AF6 medium in seawater. Carbon dioxide was applied to the photobioreactor to control to the desired pH. The procedure was repeated the same for the raceway pond cultivation. Moving on to the result and discussion, firstly, the control growth of chlorella species was observed at control pH level which was 6.6. .6. Figure A shows the growth for observation carried out and figure B shows the expected result of the growth. Dry cell weight of microalgae is correlated to the optical density at certain wavelength from 450 to 680 nanometer. The biomass concentration of chlorella species was determined by measuring the OD at 680 nanometer. The growth curve started with an exponential pace at the initial stage. It is predicted to achieve the optimum growth after day 15 and will start to reach the stationary phase after day 20. Looking on the growth of chlorella species at different pH level, figure A shows the growth conducted for different pH level on the cultivation, while figure B is the expected result on the growth at different pH investigated by Rechin. The growth potential of this species can be observed which is in a pH range of 6 to 7. pH more than 8 inhibited biomass growth and production, with pH 6 to 7 providing the greatest outcome. Chlorella species prefer a pH range of neutral for an optimal growth. This proves that the changes in pH in the culture medium can have an impact on the cell metabolism and microalgae biomass development. Moving on to the influence of pH level on product yield, it had been proved in these few studies. Metabolic processes are quite sensitive to even little pH fluctuation. pH 6 recorded the highest product yield followed by pH 5. It proves that the internal pH control inside the cell causes the decline in product yield when pH increases or decreases from its optimum culture condition. Another study shows that the highest quantity of cell dry weight was found at pH 7 and 8. However, pH 8 accumulation was high in the pH level of 6 and 7 showing the evidence of the influence of the pH in the synthesis of pHA under optimum condition. This proved that the metabolic processes are highly susceptible to mild change in pH. So this is the expected FTIR analysis of pHA under optimum culture condition. Looking at the first section of the graph, there is a prominent and broad signal at 3339 wave number represents the stretching of OH within the carboxyl groups. The presence of a peak around 2920 wave number represents CH stretching vibration of methyl and the methylene group in the polymer. The stretching of C double bond O group was seen from the signal 1625 wave number. The peaks at 1025 wave number indicates the C double bond O stretching in ester group. These characteristic signals observed confirm the presence of PHA in the algae samples. Upon investigating on the second objective, which is the scale up cultivation, microalgae grown in the photobioreactor system had the highest average growth rate, while the increased biomass harvest compared to the open raceway pond was not significant. A major advantage for photobioreactor systems can be expected for longer term cultivation where contamination by other algae or predators becomes a major concern. These problems occur especially in open pond systems or during times of reduced algae growth. 
The continuously grow culture was contained in a close photobioreactor that rarely experienced phases of reduced growth or stagnation, while contamination prone open ponds only ever held cultures for a few days before being cleaned. As a conclusion, it is successfully investigated that the metabolic processes of microalgae are quite sensitive to even little pH fluctuations and it is proved that the internal pH control inside the cell causes the decline in product yield when pH increases or decreases from its optimum culture condition. Lastly, the comparison of microalgae cultivation system for open pond and closed photobioreactor suggests that the photobioreactor is superior to produce pH-rich microalgae. So we have reached the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.